Hello students, today we are going to start with new subtopic that is digestion in humans. Previously in this chapter we studied about different types of nutrients that is fats, proteins, carbohydrates and we also saw different modes of nutrition in different animals. We spoke about the importance of those nutrients and from where do we get those nutrients that is from the food we also studied about why do we eat food now today we are going to start and uh, study about the food which enters into our mouth and what happens to that food inside our body and about the food which travels in our body and finally exit through our body so today's topic is digestion in humans elementary canal there is a new word which you must have heard elementary canal is the longest tube that starts from mouth and end at anus as you can see in the picture that there is a tube which is starting from your mouth and it passes from different organs body organs and travels through the end of the body that is anus so what are the parts of elementary canal it has the following parts first one is buccal cavity it starts from your mouth the mouth has a buccal cavity mouth or nasal both contribute to the buc buccal cavity then comes food pipe once we engulf the food or once we take in the food the food travels through this food pipe and goes into the stomach stomach is a j-shaped organ which is present in our body the food remains for three hours there and it goes into the small intestine small intestine has small finger like projection where the absorption takes place then comes large intestine then the la then the second last is rectum and the last one is anus from anus the waste fecus is ejected out from our body so children let us understand about parts of human digestive system as you can see the food enters through our mouth in mouth itself we have a salivary gland which secretes saliva in the food and that food is moved into the esophagus through pharynx from esophagus the food enters into the stomach where it stays for some time then from liver gallbladder and pancreas secretes different juices and the food is moved into the small intestine where absorption of material takes place from finger like projections then the food moves into the large intestine finally the waste material moves out from anus children now let us understand the human digestive system in detail through this video Mom, what's for dinner today? Your favorite chicken burger and pizza. Wow, great! <coughs> oh, oh my god. Every day I'm getting acidity and have burning sensation in the chest. Is there anything wrong with mama's digestion? Is this condition associated with the digestive system? I need to find out.
the human digestive system consists of elementary canal and the associated glands. The food we take passes through elementary canal which can be divided into various parts which are buccal cavity food pipe or esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine ending in the rectum and anus these parts together form the digestive tract the alimentary canal begins with the mouth that leads to mouth cavity or buccal cavity the buccal cavity consists of teeth tongue and salivary glands human being have two sets of teeth in their lifetime the first set of teeth grows during infancy and falls off at the age between 6 to 8 years these are termed as milk or deciduous or temporary teeth the second set that replaces the temporary teeth are the permanent or adult teeth the permanent teeth are 32 in numbers and may last throughout life or fall off during old age. This type of dentition is called diphyodont. Permanent teeth are of four different types. These are incisors, canines, premolars and molars hence heterodont dentition is found in human beings The arrangement of teeth in each half of the upper and lower jaw is represented by a dental formula. In human, it is represented as 2123 by 2123, that is, two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars in each half of the upper jaw, and two incisors one canine, two premolars, and three molars in each half of the lower jaw. Each tooth consists of two parts, crown and root. The crown is part of tooth we see in our mouth. The root of the tooth is planted into the jawbone to keep the tooth steady while it is working. Each tooth is made up of three layers, enamel, dentine, and pulp. Enamel is a hard protective outer layer covering the crown of the tooth. It helps in the mastication of food. Dentine is a second protective layer covering the nerve of the tooth. Pulp is the soft middle of the tooth that has a blood supply and nerve. Tongue is a fleshy muscular organ attached at the back to the floor of the mouth cavity. It is free at the front and can be moved in all directions. The upper portion of tongue has small projections called papillae. It has taste buds that sense different tastes of food. But some of my teeth do not look so nice. They have some dark, hollow spaces also. Dental cavities or dental caries is the most familiar. Dental 
cavities or dental caries is the most familiar disorder today life dental cavities are formed when sugar containing food combines with the bacteria present in our mouth these bacteria after combining with sugars produce acids the bacteria form a layer called plaque which begins to accumulate on the teeth after each meal if the plaque is not removed regularly tooth decay will take place cavity can be treated by removing the decayed part of the tooth a drill device is used to remove the decay and prepare tooth for the filling with the appropriate material digestion is a complex process involving ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection food is taken into the body through the mouth the process of taking food into the body is called ingestion digestion of carbohydrates like starch begins in buccal cavity the buccal cavity helps in chewing and swallowing of food fluid called saliva is secreted by the salivary glands food is broken into smaller molecules and mixed thoroughly with saliva and moved around the mouth while chewing by the teeth and muscular tongue Mucus in saliva lubricates and adheres the food particles into a bolus. The saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that breaks down starch, which is a complex carbohydrate, to give sugar. The bolus then passes into the pharynx and then into the esophagus by swallowing. The bolus passes down through the esophagus by wave of contractions called peristalsis. The bolus now enters the stomach. The walls of stomach have gastric glands which secrete enzymes, HCl and water. The various secretions by stomach cells chemically digest the bolus. Active pepsin converts proteins into proteoses and peptones food remains in the stomach for about 3 to 4 hours and change into chyme chyme moves into small intestine small intestine is a coiled tube about 7 meters long food remains in the small intestine for about 3 to 5 hours for digestion and absorption upper part of small intestine is called duodenum duodenum is acted upon by secretion from three sources liver pancreas and the intestinal glands liver is a reddish brown largest gland in the body situated on the right side of the body below the chest region Bile is the greenish yellow fluid secreted by the liver. It is stored in the gall bladder. Pancreas is a large whitish colored gland situated behind the stomach. Its secretion consists of starch digesting amylase, protein digesting trypsin, and fat digesting lipases. Duodenum receives secretion from the liver via gall bladder that is bile and pancreatic juice from the pancreas through a duct. Inner lining of small intestine contains glands which secrete the intestinal juice. Therefore, these juices consist of amylases, trypsin and lipases. Amylase acts on starch which remains undigested by the salivary amylase converting it into maltose 
trypsin converts proteins into peptides while lipase converts fats into fatty acids and glycerol the semi digested food thus formed enters the next part of small intestine the ileum in the ileum the digestive process is completed that is peptides are converted into amino acids by the action of peptidases and maltose is broken down into glucose by maltase adsorption of substances takes place in different parts of the alimentary canal but maximum adsorption occurs in small intestine various nutrients like carbohydrates and proteins are absorbed in the walls of the small intestine in order to increase the surface area for absorption of the digested food lining of the small intestine contains a large number of tiny finger like projections called villi each villus has a network of thin and small blood vessels close to its surface so as to pass the amino acids and glucose to the blood system and the fatty acids to lymph vessels the undigested and unabsorbed substances are passed on to the large intestine large intestine is about 1.5 meters long and consists of three regions the cecum the colon and the rectum cecum is a small blind pouch at the junction of the small and large intestines the colon is much wider than the small intestine and is about 1 meter long rectum is the large part about 15 cm long it opens at the anus anus has a circular muscle wall to keep it closed relaxation of this muscle allows the anus to open in order to pass out the bowel in the large intestine absorption of some water minerals and certain drugs takes place it also secretes mucus which helps in adhering the waste particles together and lubricating it for an easy passage the absorbed substances finally reach the tissues this process is called assimilation the undigested unabsorbed substances called feces enters into the cecum of the large intestine through a valve which prevents the backflow of the fecal matter it is temporarily stored in the rectum till defecation the digestive wastes in the rectum initiate a neural reflex causing an urge for its removal the fecal matter is removed through the anus from time to time this is called ejection